Morning. Good morning. Uh, new transfers. And uh, this is the second reading. Again, remember that the first reading you can be found in the church bulletin. So please check, continue checking for that. And here's second reading uh, coming, actually transferring out. Uh, we have Ernestine Brown transferring out to Revision Church in Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, we have Stephanie Felton Moses transferring to Arlington SDA Church in Texas. All right, we have the names. Is there a motion? Is there a second? All in favor? All right, it has been moved and carried. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. 
Well, happy Sabbath, everyone. Good morning. Welcome into the house of the Lord. God is good. And all the time, God is good. I just want to take the opportunity to welcome you all to the Mount Rubido Seventh-day Adventist Church. Do we have any first or second time visitors with us today? Any first or second time, if you could just wave your hand so we can, I'm not going to make you stand. I'm not going to put the microphone in your face. I promise. I just want to see if we have any first or second. There we go. Thank you. Thank you so much for worshiping with us today. We are grateful that you chose to worship at Mount Rubido. We have a reception prepared for you right after the service. So immediately following our service in our cafe area, if you could just join us back there and you can meet the pastors and we can have a quick word with you. Thank you so much. All right. Can we all please stand to our feet? Can you give somebody a fist bump around you? Somebody, we need to feel a little love. Can we warm up the atmosphere just a little bit? Give somebody a hug. Tell them, tell them uh, God is good. And I'm glad to be in the presence of the Lord today. Amen. Amen. The Bible says to clap your hands, all ye people. And shout unto God with what? Lord, have mercy. We're going to try this again. Y'all going to make me work hard today. The Bible says to clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto God with what? With the voice of triumph. Does anybody have a shout on the inside? Does anybody have, do you have breath in your body? If, if there's breath in your lungs, can somebody shout hallelujah? Can you shout thank you, Jesus? He didn't have to do it, but he did. We're here on today. He brought us through this week safely. We have the activity of our limbs, right? Yes, God is good. Let's pray. Father in heaven, God, we thank you so much for this day. God, we ask for your Holy Spirit to rain down on us. Father, we're pulling on you this morning. God, we need you more even now. Father, we pray that you make, just shake it up in this place just a little bit. Father, we want you to come in and take over. We need you to have your way in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise the Lord and good Mount morning, Mount Rubido. Good morning. Hallelujah. Did you come to give God praise this morning? Come on, let's give, let's give God our best praise this morning. Come on, if you could, clap your hands. Hallelujah. He's worthy. We came in to praise him. Thank you. 
Can't you feel his presence in the room this morning? Whatever it is that you need this morning, it is here in the house of the Lord. We came to let you know that his presence is here to meet your need. If you need healing in your body, his presence is here to heal you. If you need your heart healed, his presence is here to mend your broken heart. Whatever it is you need, God is here. Hallelujah. Let's lift our voice and sing it together. There's a sweet anointing here. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, we come to you humbly as we know how. Lord, just wanting to thank you first off, God. Thank you for what you've done for us, Lord. The things that you've done that we don't even know, Father, we tell you thank you. Lord, for putting breath in our bodies, Lord, we say thank you. For the activity of our limbs, God, we tell you thank you. For putting clothes on our backs, God, we say thank you. For having a roof over our heads, Lord, we say thank you. For giving us a church home that we can come to on Sabbath mornings, God, we say thank you. For the freedom to worship and to praise you, Lord, we tell you thank you. Lord, we thank you for all these things, things that are so undeserving. Father, we come to you right now just really, really leaning and depending on you. Lord, you know what people are dealing with deep down on the inside of their hearts. 
Father, things that are going on on the job, things that are going on at home, issues going on in marriages with families. Father, we lay them at the altar right now. Lord, every situation that we stand in the need of, we're putting it at the altar right now. Father, there's so much going on in the world, God. Still shootings going on in churches and schools. But God, we just want to pray a special hedge of protection over this campus right now in the name of Jesus. Father, search our hearts, God. Anyone who walks through these doors, that the only thing that they want to do is serve and worship you. Father, please break the shell, peel the scales, and massage our hearts so that we can receive the things that you have in store for us, God. Lord, help us to be as, as empty cups, as sponges, just wanting to absorb more and more of you. Father, I pray for each and every head of household in this place. Father, give them the ability to hear directly from you so that they can lead their families the way that you've called them to do. Father, I pray for each and every business owner in this place. Lord, the things that they stand in need of, their businesses that are ending, their businesses that are happening to downsize. But God, I pray right now over each and every business owner here that you would give them the ability to be able to advance their business to higher heights. Father, I pray over each and every, each and every child that is under the sound of my voice. Lord, you know the things that are, they're dealing with in their schools the things they're dealing with in their minds, the, the temptations that come up. Father, I pray for a special hedge of protection over them. Guard their ears, Lord, that they can only hear from you. Guard their eyes, God, that they may only see what is cleansing unto you. Father, guard their hearts so that as the enemy seeps through these hallways of schools and malls and all these things, God, please just protect our babies. Protect our children so that they can know that it is only you that can heal them, that can save them, that can deliver them from anything that they may stand in the need of. Father, right now, I pray for each and every person under the sound of my voice. Lord, I don't know what they're dealing with. I don't know what their prayer requests are. I don't know what they've come with on their hearts. But Father, right now, with hands uplifted, we give it all up to you. Father, with hands uplifted, we surrender everything that is weighing us down. Father, with hands uplifted, we want to fully give our lives, our hearts, our minds to you, our families to you, our souls to you. Lord, we surrender it all to you so that you may come in and take over. Lord, any emptiness that is within us, fill it with more of you, God. We give you permission to take control over our lives. We give you permission to take control over this service. We give you permission to take control over everything that is yours, God, which is the world. Father, we pray that we will be ready to see you in that, in, when the clouds burst through the skies. Father, we're so tired of the things that we have to deal with on this earth. But Lord, we know that you've done everything that we go through is just to make us stronger. So Lord, we pray that you give us the strength to pull us through so that we can see you when you come. In Jesus' name, amen.
Yes, Lord. Stage, please. Come on down, come on down. Awesome job, and have a seat right there. You guys are doing great. Thank you so much for listening. kids. I like all kinds of kids. You know what? Kids say the smartest things. Sonny, what's that about? They do. They say the smartest things. They do. I was a kid once, but I'm not a kid now. And I know I say the smartest things. But look, kids are smart. They're people too. And they're smart. You know what? Let's call some kids up. I got some questions I want to ask them. Miss Arlene, Miss Arlene. Yes. Can you call some kids up, please? Yes. All right. Let's so let, let, let hold it, Miss Arlene. What are those? What are these? Is that the knee? These are chocolates. They're Is my prizes. Prizes? Like, Do I get a prize? Maybe if you answer a question correctly. I'm asking the question, so I can't answer. Oh, I guess no. So let me pick five kids. Let's see. We'll have you come up. We'll have you come up. Go ahead, you come up. That's three. Go ahead, you come up. And you go ahead, come up. You right. said oh, how well, many kids? We got a little more. <laughs> Are you here for moral support? Yes? Oh, good. All right. Let me have you guys stand in a straight line. Please don't Uh-oh. You don't want any one. math questions? You sure? Hi. But that's who gets the biggest prize. How are you? <laughs> Hi. Okay. One line, please, facing the audience. Wow, there's a lot of kids up here. Oh, my. Turn out this way. Perfect. Are we ready, Arlene? All right, I think we are ready for that okay. first question. I have a question. I have a good question. It's a good question. You know what that question is? Hmm. What two things do we celebrate during the month of February? Uh -oh. Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day and Black History Month. All right, your mom's been talking to you. That is correct. I told you, awesome. kids say the smartest things. Okay, oh, so we'll that's so right sweet. Right. She's right. smart. Yep, she is. Ready oh. for the next question? Yeah, I got another one. Uh, uh, no, Sarah, you say it. Are you sure, Sonny? Yes, I said say it. Well, you don't have to do all that. Say it and stop acting like that. <laughs> okay, you two. But he's always acting up. Okay, Sarah, just say what you have to say. Why do you take forever? Because my name is Sarah. Stop it. <laughs> okay. What I want to ask you is, when's your birthday? Wait, what? When's your birthday? March 16th. March 16th? Yep. Can I Is that, you want to give your birthday too? What's your birthday? Mm, my, my birthday, it was Friday. It was Friday. Oh! You know what? Your birthday was Friday, Sonny. Are you going to sing or you want me to sing? Well, you're a 
girl, go on, girls and girls and girls, just sing. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Stop it. Let me finish it. Happy birthday, dear cutie. Oh. Happy birthday. Great job in answering that Stop. question. I want to have you stand up, okay, Gabby? Yeah, okay, this is getting good. These kids are smart. Yeah, they are. They're really smart. All right. So we have a third question. Okay, you ready? Now, what is something that you can do to make the world a better place? Throw away the trash on the streets. Oh, oh she's smart. That was Kids good. Kids say the smartest things. Oh, that was the right answer. You are so smart. We're going to do job. this again. Kids say the smartest things. <laughs> as long as you're not on it. Stop being mean, Sonny. All right. We got a fourth question here. Okay. So your question is, who is the nicest person you know, and why? Think long and hard about this. He's taking forever. That's okay. Let him take his time. <laughs> He's still thinking. Anybody? Anybody you know? Me? Is it me? Is it me? Everyone here, because they all worship the Lord. Smart answer. Amen. Oh, wow. That was good. That was a Thank good you. Good answer. I, I told you kids say the smartest things. <laughs> All right. Do we have one more question? Yes. I got it. I got it. I got it. <coughs> Sonny, hurry up. I will. Just let me do what I got to do. Okay. Uh, I hope you know this. I hope you're prepared for this. Do you know? 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 <laughs> Sonny, would you just ask the question, please? Sonny, please act right. Okay? He's, he's waiting. Sonny? Yes, Arlene. Do you have the question? Yes, Arlene. Do you want to ask the question? Yes, Arlene. It might be a good time to do it now. No, Arlene. Okay, okay, I'm just playing, just playing. Thank My name you. is Sonny. Kids say the smartest things. All of you kids are smart. You sure are. Sonny, answer the question. Do you know how many, how many, how many, how many, nee, 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 nee. Sonny. Yes. Do you know how many disciples, you all don't say a word, don't say nothing. Nobody says anything, please. Do you know, shh, do you know how many disciples Jesus had? Tick, tock, twelve. Tick. Yay! Is that the right answer? I think Yay! it is. That was the answer. Great Kids job. say the smartest things. Now give them their treats, give them their treats. We're going to go ahead yeah, and give, give everybody some chocolate today. You guys did great. Didn't they do great? Look at God's kids. Good job. Good job. All right. Good so we're going to be passing out Don't some forget. chocolate who to those answered who answered questions. Yeah. So those who had two, get the bigger ones. That's for you. You want to do some chocolate? Okay. We have other stuff for you. Oh, sorry. 
That's for you. And we have treats for all the other kids for today. If you have a question for me? Yeah. All right. Can we Hi. guys have you go ahead and have a seat on the carpet Bye -bye. there? Thank you so much for all your help. You know what? I just wanted to say, kids say the smartest things. You know, just to know that it, this is Black History Month and it's also Valentine's Day. Yeah, and to know her birthday. Not a lot of kids know their birthday, but they should if they had home training, right? So that's good. Yep, and then all the other questions. The 12 disciples come on. Who knows that? Because he's been studying and he knows the title. Give all the kids a handshake. Come on. Come on, everybody. Come on. Now, can we have prayer? Yes, we can have prayer. Do you want to pray, Sonny? No, not today. You want to pray, Sarah? No, not today. Who do you want to pray? Miss Arlene. <laughs> we want you to pray. Hurry up, hurry up. La, la, la. La, la, la. Okay, Miss Arlene. The waiting for you to pray, All right. please. Yeah. Uh, okay, we're going to go ahead and pray. Everybody bow your heads and close your eyes. All right, Father God, thank you so much for this beautiful Sabbath day that you have given us. Thank you for all the kids that are here listening to the sound of my voice, Father God. I ask that you bless them, each one of them, in a special way. Help them to understand the message that was presented to them today. And just be your kid, Father God. Thank you for all that you do and for all the continual blessings that you pour upon us throughout the week. Be with those who are here right now and those who are coming, Father God. And we want to thank you for just being our Father. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Church, happy Sabbath. My name is Ansi Vanukia, uh, with a small group of musicians and singers, and we love to sing about God. Today we're going to do a rendition of uh, Lift Every Voice, arranged by Roland Carter, and we have a little twist on there that we're going to do, and you will see it toward the end. We're going to invite you to join us, and so um, enjoy.
Join us for the last stanza.
Who in the world wants to get up after that? Wow. Let's give God another praise for the voices. Wow. I just have one quick announcement that I wanted to share um, to remember Philip and Brenda Bias in prayer. Uh, the doctors, am I reading the whole thing? The doctors have only given Philip 30 days to live. The family is requesting your prayers. So let's please remember the Bias family. Also, let's remember the Hill family as well. Um, we're now about to prepare for our tithe and offering. Let us pray, Father in heaven, Lord, as we uh, prepare to, to give that which is yours, we pray that you bless each and every part of our giving. We bless our finances, God. Bless the finances of the church and our personal finances. In Jesus' name, amen. The Civil War led to the emancipation of nearly four million African Americans. As freed people with very few economic resources, they needed to find a way to save their earnings and acquire wealth as new workers in a wage economy. The federal government chartered the Freedmen's Bank in 1865, the very year that the North won the Civil War. The well, Freedmen's Bank was a great idea in theory. Newly emancipated African Americans could receive loans to purchase land, could receive advice uh, on how to manage their money. By 1871, 37 branches had opened in 17 states. The bank hired local black leaders as cashiers and solicited depositors among the formerly enslaved. The one flaw, though, is that black folk had no money. This is after the Civil War, there are no reparations. So I've always wondered, you created a bank, well, what do you expect black folk to deposit? Goodwill? Some people invested only a few pennies, but still, they invested. While the majority of accounts were less than $50, the bank ultimately counted nearly $60 million in total deposits from almost 70,000 depositors. But in 1873, a Great Depression rocked the nation. The Depression of 1873 creates a panic, a run on banks, and banks start failing. The abolitionist Frederick Douglass is brought in essentially to keep those black folk who had made their deposits from pulling out their money. But that wasn't enough to really shore up uh, the bank itself. And within a year or two after that, it collapses. As a result, half the depositors received payouts that on average were only three quarters of the value of their accounts. The other half received nothing at all. The Freedmen's Bank's collapse not only means that black people will not have any of those resources to invest in their future, it also helps to create or animate a distrust in government institutions. So people begin to feel betrayed by the union, by the government, in ways that are going to have lasting effects for generations. Welcome to our worship experience. Out of all the churches and places you could have been, you're here with us, and we're so grateful for it. It is our prayer that today is everything you need and more as we strive to create a church where lives are being transformed to be transformational. Today is our final service where we'll be highlighting Black Wealth Matters. All this month, we've been focused on showing ways to empower our community with knowledge and understanding. If you want to see any previous services that you may have missed, you can find them on our website. For our youth, we're hosting a weekly Zoom group called Path to Purpose, Ideas to Income. It's a free four-part workshop for any youth interested in starting their own business or monetizing their new ideas, and will be hosted by Kimon Hines and others. It'll be every Sunday in February at 9 a.m., and the link to the event will be on our website. 
We're partnering with the Red Cross again for a blood drive on February 24th. We'll be having it during the day, right in Maintenance Hall, and we'd love for you to come out and support our community with your donations. It's really helpful for us if you visit our events page on the site and register ahead of time. Thanks in advance for helping us in this battle against sickle cell. On February 24th at 4.30 p.m., Don Daniels has a virtual presentation on the pill method. Don has helped thousands figure out new ways to tackle debt and even helped individuals pay off their mortgages in seven years. It'll be streaming right on our YouTube and Facebook pages. That's it for now. We can't wait to see you at these events. Also, all of our events will be on our website and Facebook events page with the links to register. You can even make it easier. Just text the word bulletin to the number right on the screen to receive our bulletin. You bookmark that link and you'll always be up to date. Well, it's time to praise the Lord again. Come on, somebody clap your hands and praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be lifted up. Did anybody come with a praise this morning? Has God done anything for you? Hallelujah. Did he keep you all week long? Come on, did he sustain you all week long? Did he provide for every one of your needs this week? Hallelujah. We have so many reasons to give God praise. Hallelujah, that when we come into the house of the Lord, we shouldn't be quiet. We shouldn't be, we shouldn't be silent because God has done so much for us. Hallelujah, that we can't help but praise him. Every time I think about his goodness, my hands go up. Hallelujah. Every time I think about his, his goodness, I've got to do something. I've got to say something. I've got to clap my hands. I've got to tell somebody. I've got to show that I'm grateful for everything that God has done for me. Has God done anything for you that you understand that he's worthy of your praise this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, clap those hands, everybody. Sun said, I'm gonna praise you. Say, I'm gonna praise to the going down of the same. Said, I'm gonna praise him. I'm gonna praise him for the good things that he has done. Said, I'm gonna praise him. I'm gonna praise him and the victory he has won. Said, I'm
the sun said I
I said something happens when you praise God. My Bible tells me that at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And it was those praises that not only broke them, them free, not only opened their doors, but it opened the doors of those that were next to them. Your praise has the power to break people free. Not just you, but your family free. Your friends free. Your co-workers free. Hallelujah. So we don't clap our hands just to do it. But there's power in our praise. When we learn how to clap our hands, when we learn how to open up our mouths, there is something that is released in the atmosphere. Healing can take place right there. praise. Come on, clap your hands all over this house. And while you're clapping your hands, open up your mouth and say something to God. We bless you this morning, Jesus. We thank you for what you're doing in this place. We thank you for everything that you've done for us. We are the ones that came back just to say thank you. praise. We don't hold, withhold our gratitude this morning. We just want to come before your presence. Bow before your throne and tell you thank you. You didn't have to do it for us. You didn't have to wake us up this morning. You didn't have to give us life and breath in our bodies, but you did. And so we came to say thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
say you get the glory, Lord. 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 Put your hands together. Come on, put your hands together for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Man, we worship today. Good night. Oh, God is good. And all the time. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, we just give God all the glory, um, all the honor, all the praise. We thank him that he is the strength of our life. Any, anybody just thankful for the faithfulness of God today? We serve a faithful God. And as we are concluding uh, Black History Month, just as we celebrate an amazing God that has brought our people a mighty long way. And can we just praise God for the group that led us in lift every voice and sing. My goodness. Uh, man, <laughs> yo, I, dude, I, I'm still just basking in that, that, that afterglow. Uh, from that from that word we're gonna get into this word today is that all right as we conclude our series today we're talking about black wealth matters and black history month um just want to just real quick just just encourage us and pastor adams mentioned this that if we could just remember the banks family stephen banks lost his mother on this past week and we want to just just lift him up he needs the prayers of the saints also, uh, Sister uh, Joyce Clavon, she let me know that her husband's sister passed this week. And so we want to keep the Clavon family in prayer. I want to invite you now, if you would, to stand with me as we read God's Word. I want to invite you to turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Matthew, the 25th chapter. Matthew 25. And we're going to be looking at verse 14. Uh, I'll be reading in your hearing that's Matthew, the 25th chapter. And we're going to focus our attention on verse 14. We're going to begin there. Here's what God's Word says. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. 
To one he gave five, five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold and gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with these five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with these two bags. See, I've gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man. Harvesting where you've not sown and gathering where you've not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here's what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed? Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I return, I would have received it back with interest. So take that bag of gold and give it to the one who has 10 bags. Saints of God, with your prayers and God's help, I want to preach under the subject today, fill the hole, fill the hole. If you would bow your heads with me, Father, we just want to say thank you for who you are. We honor you. We bless your holy name. And now, God, I just pray in these few moments that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart, that be acceptable in your sight my Lord, my strength, and my Redeemer. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Fill, fill the hole. Fill, fill the hole. What I want to start off today, just kind of laying the groundwork for this particular message, is really talking about perception. Somebody say perception. And, and when, we, when we talk about perception, when we're, when, we're, when we're talking about it, when we're identifying, what we're talking about simply is the lens at which we view our world, when we talk about our perception. And I, I want you to know, and I think all of us would acknowledge this, we'd all admit this about our own perception, that oftentimes the way that we see things, the way that we kind of conceive them can often be kind of foggy, can be a little off, may not be completely accurate uh, the way that we perceive particular things. And, and so what I want to do, and I saw this illustration online, and I, I, just, I, just, I just knew it would work for this message. Uh, it was from Pastor Robert Madu. And um, I have to admit, I have never seen this before. Now, you may have had better perception than me, uh, but I have never seen this before. So I have two logos here. Uh, I'm going to ask them to put the first one up. This is a logo of the FedEx logo. Anybody familiar with the FedEx logo, right? We've seen the FedEx logo for all of, probably all of our lives. We see those trucks driving by. We, we see that FedEx logo. But what I've never noticed about the FedEx logo, I didn't notice it, was that there's an arrow there between the E and the X, now, I guess everybody else here, you've seen that before, but I, I've been looking at that FedEx logo for over 40 years. And I ain't, I, until Robert Madu brought that out, I had never seen that before. And, and what I discovered, you know, that, 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 that little arrow between the E and the X, it's, it's pointing, it's about pointing forward. It's symbolic of progress. It's symbolic of movement. But for many of us, until maybe recently you saw it online, you've, you've, you've looked at that FedEx logo over and over again, and you didn't see that arrow there. All right. Now, y'all, y'all, y'all know... Um, 
You know, we, we love donuts up in here. Praise the Lord. Amen. A amen. We rebuke it, but then sometimes we say praise God for Krispy Kreme and praise God for my brother that opened up a restaurant, a donut shop in, in Redlands called Eat Dough. Yeah, Dough. It's called Dough. Y'all got to check it out sometime. That's a little shout out for one of my, my, my friends. He opened up a spot up there. Um, but, you know, we, we like donuts. We like, we like ice cream. And so I, I'll be honest, I, again, I've never seen this before myself. Never seen this before myself. Um, the Baskin Robbins logo. Whenever I, I just think Baskin Robbins, I just think just, you know, Baskin Robbins, going to get some ice cream. I've never seen the 31 in there. Did y'all did, did seen that? Y'all see? Okay, dang. I guess it's just me. <laughs> I've never seen that 31 in the middle there. I like, you know, for the 31 flag, I've never seen that before. Just the B and the R, because I'm not even thinking about the 31 when I go to Baskin Robbins. All I'm thinking about is, can I get my waffle cone? Can I get my pistachio ice cream? Like, yeah, I, I just, I've just never noticed that before. It's just tucked away in there. And what I want to just suggest to us today, what I want to suggest to us is that Oftentimes, just in our lives, talking about perception, that a lot of times in our lives that we see these symbols, we see these things that we see over and, and over again, and, and, and we look at them and we miss them. We don't see these things because our perception has been conditioned a certain way. And, and what I, what I want to suggest is not only does this happen in the natural, but how many know this happens in the spiritual? Well, there's things that God has shown us over and over and over again, but unfortunately, because of my perception, because of the way that I see things, there's things that God has tried to put before me that I'm missing in my life, in my experience. And any, anybody ever, do y'all believe that today, that there's some stuff that God wants you to see and recognize that's sitting right in front of you, but because of where you're at spiritually, you're not quite able to see it. I know I I got some singles in here, man. There may be some folk in your class, amen, that you're looking over right now, praise the Lord. But because they don't have a certain outfit on or because they don't have a certain swag and it's the person that God has ordained for you, but because of your perception, you, you miss it. You miss it. And, and so the challenge for us, brothers and sisters, again, talking about Black Wealth Matters as we're ending this series, as, we just, as we're talking about perception here, our challenge and what we're asking God to do, God, open up my eyes. Help me to see things the way that you see them. God, help me to, for the stuff that you are placing before me, help me not to miss your move. Help me not to miss the things that are right there. Help me to have your perception, your vision, on my life and on my experience. That's my prayer. Is that your prayer, y'all? Amen. And as we look at the Word of God today, as we open up this Word and this final message on our Black Wealth series, what I believe that God is trying to do for us today in His Word is that he's trying to open up some things that we may not have seen before. I believe that God is trying to prepare our hearts and our minds for the resources he wants to entrust to us. Look, this is not the only time we're going to be talking about black wealth. The, the reality is that as we become more financially literate, as God begins to start giving us opportunities, there's going to be some things and resources that God is going to be entrusting to his people to be a blessing to the kingdom. Does anybody believe that today? Does anybody believe that God wants to entrust his people with resources, not for their own selves, but to be a blessing for the kingdom? Does anybody believe that? But God has to prepare us to receive what he wants to entrust to us. And what God is trying to do today is he's trying to open up our eyes so that we can see this thing. And so we just read in the text, Bible says that there are these three servants. There are how many servants, y'all? There's these three servants. The Word of God says that the Lord entrusts them with resources. In the NIV, it says that he gives them gold, gives a guy five, five bags of gold, gives another guy two bags of gold, then gives another guy one bag of gold. But the guy with the one bag of gold, the Word of God says in verse 17 that the guy that had one bag of gold, he received the one bag, he went off, and he dug a hole 
in the ground and he hid his master's money. My God. Bible says that this third servant, what he does is he digs a hole and he hides what his master has given him. And the reality is if we're just looking at this thing, it just metaphorically, we recognize we've talked about talents, we've talked about bags, we talked about all kinds of different things, but the b bottom line is this can represent anything that God is entrusting to us, whether that be our talents, whether that be our abilities, whether that be our resources. And the reality is for so many of us, it's easy to succumb to the temptation of burying these gifts in the ground where we become literal hole diggers when we should invest our time and energy and resources and being a blessing into advancing the kingdom of God. And so I just, I want to declare today that we do not want to be hole diggers in this church. Amen. That we, we don't want to be hole diggers. We don't want to be gold diggers. We don't want to. <laughs> I want to declare that I am not a hole digger by the grace of God. Can you put your hands together and give God some praise that we're going to be faithful with what God entrusts to us? And so I believe, y'all, I believe just as we're just trying to just let God give us new vision, give us new perception, give us a new framework, I believe that there's some insights from the passage that we're looking at here that can help to illuminate our minds and prepare us for God to entrust us with some stuff. And I believe this phrase right here is what's going to help prepare us, and that is this phrase, well done good and faithful servant. Well done, good and faithful servant. I believe in that phrase, it provides for us a, a mental framework that we can adopt so that we can maximize our gifts, talents, potential opportunities that God entrusts to us and not to dig holes. And so the first shift that I believe God is trying to help us make in our mindset and our framework to prepare us for what he wants to entrust to us is in the first word, well. Somebody say well. Notice that the Bible does not say, that the master does not say, perfectly done, good and faithful servant. He says, well done good and faithful servant. And the reality is, I don't know about you, but I want to do well in things. The, but I, I'm striving not for perfection. I'm striving for excellence. Yo, I, I, I ran across this amazing quote here from John Acuff. He says this. He's a best-selling author and a speaker who helps people overcome perfectionism. He says this. Um, he, he talks about perfectionism is not the same thing as doing things well. Perfectionism is a lie that tells you that you have to do everything perfectly or else you're a failure. Perfectionism prevents you from starting, finishing, or enjoying your projects because you're always afraid of making mistakes, being criticized, or falling short of unrealistic epics expectations. Perfectionism is the enemy of progress and happiness. So you promised yourself that you're going to work out every day this year in 2024. Don't look to the right or to the left. Just keep your eyes right up here. And just because you missed two days out of the week, you're ready to throw in the towel. I'm giving up. You promised yourself that you would not eat sugar this year. Help us, God. But at the Soul Food Lunch last week, when they brought out that bread pudding and some of that sweet potato pie, you had been promising yourself, oh, yeah, I'm not going to eat any sugar, but at the soul food lunch, you got some dessert, and now you're just like, I just give up. The reality is that if perfection is your goal, the first mess up messes up your whole progress. Look at what verse 16 says. This is what verse 16 says about the man that actually went forward and did what the master asked him to do. The man who received five bags of gold went at once. Somebody say at once. 
at once, the Bible says. He didn't wait for things to be perfect to move. He didn't wait for there not to be any clouds in the sky before he made a move. The Bible says that the guy with the five bags that he left at once, he did not allow perfection to destroy his progress. And if you want to be in a better financial position, saints of God, if you want to, 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 if you want to be in a finan better financial position where you have a well-done mindset and not a perfectly done mindset, then you've got to eliminate perfect and replace it with excellent. You've got to shift your thinking. You've got to say, I'm striving for excellence. I'm not perfect, but I'm making progress. I'm going to celebrate my progress. I'm going to have some setbacks. I know that nothing is guaranteed, but I'm going to go forward and get it. I'm not going to let perfectionism impact my forward movement. And our problem is, saints of God, is that when we're trying to get in a better position financially, oftentimes what we do is we start overthinking. And because we overthink, we never get to it. First, I, I need a budget first. I need to, I need to get the, download the financial app. I need to take Dave Ramsey's financial peace uh, course. I, I'm, I need to, I'm going to start my business, but not this year. And, and we just overthink. We just overthink. And we just overthink. And, and, and you see in the text that the first and the second servant, they just got started and just did it right away. The Bible says they moved immediately. And the best process that you can adopt in your life for anything is the process that you're doing. We're just such overthinkers in the room and online, saints of God. You've got a plan on your hard drive that you've been thinking about for 10 years. Some of us have been wondering about switching careers and becoming entrepreneurs and starting our own nonprofits. Some of us have been just researching and researching. Are there any researchers in the house today? Researchers that just love to just study a thing to death, but never make any forward progress. Ain't nothing wrong with research and planning. Somebody say amen. But we don't want, we don't want to become reckless with our finances and our lives, but at a certain point, you got to make a move. Can, can I just pause and just highlight our blessed business? Can I, can I, can I highlight my brother Derek? Yo, can we just affirm one of our, one of our brothers in the building? Can we, can we just, Derek, go, go ahead and raise your hand, bro. Come on. Now, tomorrow, we're going to be going to the Gentle Grill in Temecula. Amen. All right, we, we come in there to bless our brother. Hey, hey, it got some good vegan food. We, we've been passing out flyers. We're blessing the business. This is something we're going to be doing on a regular basis for the body of Christ. Amen, y'all. Oh, y'all, come on. Y'all can do better than that. Amen. Now, Derek, this is your first restaurant, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is Derek's first restaurant. Now, bottom line is um, he did some research. He did some study. But at a certain point, my brother had to move. He could not allow for research and overthinking to prevent his progress. And we're coming to bless you tomorrow. Praise God. Look, come on, put it one more time together. I don't need a budget to recognize that I don't need to eat out every day. I don't have to put that together first to stop going to Starbucks and getting my latte on a regular basis. Oh, y'all quiet now. And no, we're not against the budget, but there's some stuff you can do right now that doesn't, doesn't require a budget. I, 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 don't have to, I don't have to put, get the financial app together just to know that I, I can start saving some money. Amen. And so we see this brother right here, one who make, wanting to make a move and was just over, overthinking. Then the next word is done. Well done. Somebody say done. In point number one, we address the people who have challenges beginning, but in, but in this point, I'm talking to the people that start too many things. You got 25 investments. You have 55 different ideas. And here's what I'm learning and what God is trying to teach me. And I'm just, can I just testify? Can I testify to y'all? Hey, can I testify? Is that all right? What I'm learning, what God is teaching me 
is that every single idea, every single thought, every single item, request that comes my way, because a lot of stuff comes my way, I've got to, what, what, what the Lord's trying to teach me is that I've got to file them in one of these four categories. Start, send, schedule, or stop. Start, send, schedule, or stop. And so when someone comes, hey, hey pastor, I got a great idea. Okay, I got I to gotta, I gotta filter it now. Which one of these categories do I file that request in? See, start, what start means is this is something that I need to do right now. Right, so somebody comes, say, okay, dude, I need to get on that. I need to move right away. I, I, I need to stop, prioritize this, and I need to move. That's start. That's when I take it and I just move with it. But then there's some things that come my way that maybe I don't have the time to do, and so what I have to do is I've got to send it, which means that, yes, that's a great idea, but maybe there's somebody that I can delegate that to, and they can take it, and they can move with it so that there can still be forward progress. i got to start kind of filtering things things that way. Or somebody may come and they be, hey, I got this great book, Five Ways to Win at Home. Well, where, where do I file that? Well, maybe there's somebody else that can read it and delegate it to. Maybe I can um, say, okay, you know what, I can't read that right now, but what I'll do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click in my Amazon Kindle account for favorites or for books that I want to read later. And so I'll, I can't read it right this moment, but I'm going to schedule to read that book two months from now because I can't do it right. I can't start it and I can't can't send it, so I'll schedule it. But then that fourth one is where we struggle. That fourth one is the hardest because that fourth one is someone is making a request of me and I'm not going to start it. I'm not going to send it. I'm not going to schedule it. I just got to say I can't do it. I stop. I can't, I, can't, I can't do that one. I got to look them in the eye and tell them, thank you for that recommendation, but this is not something that I'm going to be able to do. I'm not going to be able to read that book. I'm not going to be able to assign it to anybody. I'm not going to be able to schedule it for later. And family, a lot of times the reasons why we are not getting things done is because we're trying to do too much. So we're able to start, no problem. We'll get running, we'll get going, we'll get it out, out, out the gate. But what happens is a lot of times we get distracted. We'll see something over there and we'll head over there. We'll start something and then we'll go, switch over there. We're like those cats with the laser pointers where they're constantly just wherever the laser pointer goes, they're just going there and just, they're just running after this, running after that, running after this, running after that, and, and, and we get nothing done. Look, I, I, I don't know about my home project renovation folk. If you're one of those people that starts home projects and doesn't complete them, again, just stay focused right up here. And I don't need any spouses looking over at your spouse if that's you. No judgment today. But you know you get that inspiration on HDTV. You saw that nice bathroom renovation, and it looked like you could do it yourself. So you get in that bathroom, you start to break down stuff and, and, and start to tear some walls up and start to get some painting and you get going, but then you get distracted because you're trying to do too much. And so instead of completing the bathroom project, you jump into the garage. Oh, come on, y'all. And now nothing is painted, nothing's completed. And now somebody comes over, I come over, and you're talking about putting lights on the outside of the house. And if you're in the restroom, you don't got the garage done, and now you're talking about lights. Because you're trying to do too much. Part of the mindset shift that has to happen is we're going to be better financially, y'all, is we got to have the character to be able to run every idea, item, and thing across that framework and ask ourselves the question, is this something that I should start? Is this just something that I should send? Is this something that I should schedule? Or is this something I should just stop? 
Because how many know, man, people will always have a lot of ideas for stuff that you should be doing. I love this quote from Pastor Roger Hernandez. He says this, success is the ability to be perfectly fine with being mediocre at most things. Do you think if they asked Michael Jordan, hey, Mike, you, you, you're an athlete. We want you to play starting forward for the men's national soccer team. Like, that's, it, it, just, we're going to throw that out there for you, Michael. Now, we, we know he's an athlete. We know he's not the GOAT, but we know he's an athlete. If y'all remember in January, I, asked, I posed this question in our first sermon series. It was this. Who are you going to disappoint in 2024? I got to get comfortable with recognizing, there's just going to be some stuff that I'm not going to be excellent at so that I can focus on the most important things. And so I got to be comfortable with the fact that my strength may not be budgeting, but my wife's may be. And so instead of me taking a class on budgeting, I just got to go say, babes, I need you to take care of the finances. I may be really good at selling stuff to people, but really bad at organizing. Let me just have somebody who's stronger than me do that. I love this quote from John Acuff. It says this, the keys to success are these. Write your goals down, then cut them in half. So young people say, like, if you're a young person here and you're just saying, yo, I want to start on my basketball team, I want to start on my football team, I, I want to start, write that goal down, I want to start on the basketball team, but then cut it in half. I'm going to take 500 shots a day. That may not be everything, but you've broken that goal down so that you can manage it, so that you can work towards having success. Well done. Good. Now, we're going to be kind of rolling through these last few here. Good. I want to ask you one thing, saints of God. Do you enjoy what you're doing? Your job, your source of income, do you enjoy it? I'm not asking, are you good at it? I'm not asking you whether or not people affirm you in it. I'm asking you if you enjoy it. I'm not asking you if you get things done. I'm asking you, do you enjoy what you do? Because how many know we have this love-hate relationship with enjoyment? See, the colonizers, they've told us, like when we talk about worship, you can see it in worship. They told us that if you lift your hands, if you clap your hands, if you stomp your feet, it's not appropriate to worship. And unfortunately, many of us have a colonizer's mentality. Because if you're enjoying something too much, it's got to be sin. That thing must not be holy if, I, if I'm enjoying that thing too much. You, you think church has to be endured instead of being enjoyed. You think work can't be enjoyed. That's why 80% of people hate their jobs. They wake up every morning and say, this is not what I get to do. This is what I have to do. And the Bible says in Psalms 37, verse 4, delight yourself in the what? And he will give you the desires of your heart. I need you to know that desires are not necessarily sinful. Wanting nice things is not anti-Bible. Having one pair of shoes is not humility. It's okay to enjoy some stuff. It's okay to go on vacation. I'm going to pause right there. Somebody ought to lift up your hands because God's trying to set some folk free in here. It's all right to go on vacation. It's all right to enjoy some stuff. Dude, we serve a God that created a world for his people to enjoy. But we're in such bondage mentally that we don't recognize that there's nothing wrong with enjoying what we do. So James 1 and verse 17, it says, every good and perfect gift, come on somebody, it comes from who? 
It comes from God. And so I can give God praise if he allowed me to have a few shekels in my pocket to be able to go and get some rest and recuperation. Amen. That gift didn't come from me. That gift came from God. I want to thank the Lord that, yes, every now and then I can go out and I can, yes, eat out sometimes because every good and perfect gift comes from who? It comes from God. But we have this mindset that we can't enjoy anything. And look, we all know that good work is hard. Amen. You're not going to have a smooth pass through things. You're not going to have, you're going to be in seasons where you've got to grind it out. But if every day is drudgery and I'm just getting through it, then that is not a good place to be. I like this quote here from Kerry Newhoff. He said this, a lot of people when they're working are always thinking about vacation. The solution is not time off when the problem is what you spend time on. See, because the moment you come back from vacation, you're thinking, man, I got to get up out of here. And you just hate your life until the next vacation. In the text, the Bible says the man went out and immediately put his money to work. And the Bible says that both servants, they doubled their money. They were good at what they were doing. They enjoyed what they were doing. Well done, good, faithful. How many know not every weekend is going to be a high Sabbath at Rubido? Now, it was great today. Amen. Not every weekend is going to be mountaintop experience for you. Not every time you open up your Bible and worship, you're going to get fresh revelation. Amen. Amen. But it's not about that. Sometimes you just got to be faithful. Sometimes you're going to have to just get on your knees. You're going to be in that word, and you're going to feel like you didn't get anything out of it that day. But the reason why you get back into his presence, the reason why you get back into that word, the reason why you prostrate yourself and pray before the Lord is not because you're going to always be on the mountaintop, but sometimes it's just simply about being faithful. And what God is trying to teach us is that, yes, not every time is going to be some emotional experience where I'm going to be always feeling it because God doesn't want me to just be in there because I'm feeling it because he knows that there's so many times where my feelings will lead me astray. But what God wants me to get to the place of is where I don't even, when I'm not feeling it, where I don't see, feel like I'm getting any fresh revelation, that because I love him, because I'm faithful to him, I see still get in there and I still get in his presence. I still get in his word. I'm still seeking his face, not because I have a feeling, but because I'm trying to be faithful. So there's going to be some parts of any job that are not going to be pleasant, but you got to get through them. You have to say, I'm going to show up. I'm not going to break my promises. I'm not going to disappoint my co-workers. I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to be faithful. I'm just going to skip here to the last part here because we're, we're running out of time. Five, well done, good, faithful servant. We're closing now. At the end of the day, it's not about me. It's about the master who gave me the bags of gold in the beginning anyway. Bible says this in verse 24 and 25. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you were a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid, and I went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant, 
And then, this is interesting. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I've not gathered seed, question mark? See, the reason why this, this servant dug holes and hid things is because he had a completely warped view of who God really was. And what I need somebody to know here today, that you may be here and you, you have this warped image of who God is, that God is a God that is like, you can't enjoy everything, anything. That God is a God that is just, he's not for you, he's against you. That he's a God that is literally doing everything he can to find a loophole to keep you from glory. Some of us have that view of God. And, and God, the, the master is here saying, yo, dude, this qu dude that's, that's not how I am. This is what you thought of me, but that's not, that's, that's not how I am. Some of us have a mindset, man, if I just forgot to pray today, forgot to have devotion, man, somehow, some way, man, I got into this car accident. The reason why I got into the car accident is because I didn't pray today. Or because I didn't have worship today. Or maybe, maybe I wasn't faithful in my giving. That's our view of God. When we serve a God that's so merciful, that's got so much grace, is there anybody that could just testify to today about the mercy and grace of God that you've received blessings that you knew that you were not worthy of, that you've been unfaithful as ever, as God still blessed you, he still provided for you, he still watched after you. That's who our Heavenly Father is. And the reason why we're digging holes is because we don't know our Father. The reason why we're digging holes is because our perception of the King is off. And what God wants to do through His grace, through His mercy, through what we see in his son Jesus, is he wants to just show us that he is a good father, that he loves you with an everlasting love, that you don't have to dig holes anymore. And somebody here today, you've dug some holes in what God's invitation for you to do today is to fill the hole. To fill the hole. You don't need that hole to hide what he's giving you any longer. He's a good father. He loves you. And as we're preparing for God to do greater in our lives, as we're preparing for God to entrust us, we got to get the right picture of God because if he gives and entrusts us with this, and we still don't know who he is, we're going to dig some holes. Sometimes the holes that we dig is because we're just simply trying to hold on and hoard, as we talked about a few weeks ago. Because we don't know that our Father is a God of abundance. That if we would not just hold and hoard, that simply God wants us to be a conduit of the blessings that he provides to us, to others. But we dig in holes trying to hide it. I want to invite you to stand with me as we get ready to close. My appeal is very simple today. There's a few groups of people here in the building and online. Maybe you grew up in a religious environment where the God that you were introduced to 
is not really the God of the Bible. Because the God that you were introduced to is a God that's not trying to save you, not a God that's chasing after you, not a God that's doing everything in his power, using all of his resources to invite you home. A God that is a God of abundance that wants to bless you. That's not the God you grew up. That's not the God that was introduced to you. And what you're just simply saying with this, with this call is that, God, I want you to fill the hole. God, I want you to change my perception of who you are. I need you to give me new eyes. God, I, there's, there are blessings and there, there are things that you are just passing before me, but because of my perception, it's right in my face and I can't even see it. And the reason why I'm so hard on other people, the reason why I'm so judgmental on other people, the reason why I can't give anybody grace is because I have not received the grace of God for myself. Because I don't know my father. So today, if, if you're here, you just say, God, I want to really get to know who you really are. God, I want to I want to understand how you are that God of Luke 15, the God that is that father that that is looking out for his prodigal every single day, looking at the road to see if that prodigal comes home. And it doesn't matter how much you've wasted. It doesn't matter how many mistakes that you've made. He's looking to bring you back home. And so if that's you today. God, give me new eyes. Give me new perception. I want to invite you to slip out of your seat. Come and meet me at the front. We just want to pray for you today. We just want to pray, God, give you new perception. God, fill every hole. Fill every gap. Give me a new vision of who you are. Help me to have new eyes, God, so I can have a new experience with you, so that I can see what you got right in my face and be able to move forward in faith. If that's you, just slip out of your seat. Tell your neighbor, excuse me. We want to pray for you today. God, give me new eyes. Help me to see you in a new way. We call you right now in the name of Jesus. If you're here, just a few moments. God, give me new eyes. Help me to see that you are an amazing father, that you love me with an everlasting love. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. The enemy has been lying to humanity from the day we were in the garden. He's been trying to distort our view of God. He does not want you to know that God is for you and not against you. God has paid such a high price for your salvation. He loves you. There may be somebody else here today. You're a good, you, you can begin something. You can start well, but you, you just, for whatever reason, you, you're not really able to ever bring it to completion. You get distracted with a lot of things. Maybe you're somebody here today that you just get overwhelmed with so much. You got all these different plans and ideas and you never start. Maybe you're on the other end of that. If you need prayer today, you're just saying, God, I just need for you to help me to move forward. I just need you to help me to have breakthrough where I can start and, and Lord, come to completion. Where, Lord, if I'm just overwhelmed with stuff, that God, you would give me focus to focus on the most important things. God, give me a framework where I can say no to some stuff so that I'll be okay with being mediocre in some things so I can be excellent in a few. We want to pray for you. We want to pray for you. Church fam, I want to invite you just to just extend your hands to those that have come forward right now. We just want to pray 
pray a prayer or blessing over them today. Eternal Father, we're just thankful for Jesus. We're thankful, God, that you're an amazing Father, that you're an amazing Master. God, we confess that our view of you oftentimes is distorted, is warped. God, we, we just, if we just be honest, God, we have believed the lies that have been presented to us by the enemy about you. And I'm praying, God, for those that have come today that have just simply saying, open my eyes. Lord, give me new perception. Lord, help me to see you as you really are. I'm asking that they would see you in the face of Jesus. That, Lord, you would show them your mercy and show them your grace and show them your love. God, may they know that you're a God that has your arms open wide, Lord, to welcome them into your arms. May they know, God, that you're not looking to, 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 to just punish them at every corner. That, Lord, you're not withholding blessings, God. But, God, you have grace upon grace upon grace. And that when you must discipline us, you discipline us as a good but Father, Lord, give them new eyes. I pray for those that have come forward, Lord, just saying, Lord, I, I struggle with starting. I struggle with completing. Lord, I just ask that, Lord, you would give us in 2024 strong starts to complete and a focus. I'm asking God for somebody that's got so many things and they're overwhelmed and so they are paralyzed by all the things they've got to decide. I pray, God, that you would help them to focus on the few so they can make forward progress. We honor you today. Prepare us to receive, Lord, whatever you want to entrust to us, whatever talent, whatever gift, whatever opportunity, Give us the heart posture to be ready for it. We love you. We honor you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's put our hands together for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. God bless you. God bless you. My God. How many of you were blessed by what you heard today? Amen. Just before we close, I want to just remind our first and second time guests that there is a free gift for you in the lobby. We would like to invite you to come to a small reception right behind the welcome desk. So please stop there on your way out. Let us bow our heads for prayer. God, we want to just thank you for what we heard today. God, we want to thank you for the gifts, for the resources that you have given us. God, let us use those gifts and resources to advance your kingdom. God, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your love towards us each and every day. Bless us as we leave here, God, and help us to keep this on our hearts and in our minds. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.